outside one on one against Ryan. He goes top shelf. Ryan has no chance as the UIC defense was caught off guard. Can't do it much better than that. The goal scored at 13. Hmm, no, 12. Uh, I never was good at counting backwards. That's my. <laughs> that's why I could count forward. I'm mean, considering backwards. 12:47. 12:47. Good for you. Calculus does help, doesn't it? <laughs> that's why I was never made for this game. The game doesn't bother me that much, but I can't count backwards worth of beans. 12:47. Here's the goal, and there's a one to nothing Lake Superior State lead. Puck came dangerously loose in front. Assist on the play going to Dean Dixon, his 12th of the year. 21st point, which ties in for the scoring lead, and another assist, as you had mentioned, Greg Houston, who leads the team in assists with 15, and a total of 19 points. So that goal coming at 12-47, and it makes it a one to nothing hockey game. This connection there uh, among the two defenders as Simmer fed it one way, Husband cut the other. Lake Superior comes up with it. They have a one to nothing lead in this game. Six and a half minutes remaining, first period of play. What a great feed from Dixon that set up that goal. Puck comes in the attack, and Simmer lost it. Puck, they battle for it on the near wing side. Stinsky trying to get over to it, put right in behind the net, and skating through to try to get it is Vermette, who got that goal just a few moments ago. Mark Vermette, his first career goal. Boy, it could not have come at a better time for the Lakers. Nice back feed by Cote. Machorek, cut it across, a shot by Vermette this time, and heavy traffic, Ryan was there. Finally, on the second rebound, was able to get a hold of that puck. Stinsky was digging around in there. He wanted a backhand one in. Let's go to the videotape. Here you see the play originating out at the point. UIC has dropped way back into their own zone. Quick shot taken from the point by Terry Hasek. Initial save is made by Ryan. Now he has to cover it up. It's caught in his skates. There right on the doorstep was Vermette, hoping to poke home a freebie. And Stinsky was coming in from the backside and nearly got his stick on the puck. So they were both gathered right there. They'll face off to the right of Ryan as we have gone under six minutes remaining here for the first period of play. Our guest between periods will be the Twin Towers, they call them, Mike Mersch and uh, Sean Cronin, the two big defensemen who play such an integral role in this hockey team. You'll meet them both between periods. Try it again here. As Ryan awaits the faceoff, Simmer tried to get it. He did indeed get it for UIC. And the Flames will try to get it going. As of yet, the Flames have not been able to get on the board. Offside, obvious offside that time as uh, Torrey was forced inside the zone. The puck did not go with him. And then trying to carry it across that time was Seaver and the offside, uh, a rather obvious one, with 5.43 on the clock. Going in tonight, UIC was ranked as the uh, number six team in the league on the power play, the number eight in terms of killing off penalties. Here is uh, Huglin with it in center ice. And here comes UIC once again. Seaver held up so that uh, Clink could go ahead and take it in. It was a nice move. Puck cleared. Here comes on the counterattack now. Uh, it is Keith Martin, always dangerous. Brings it across. It's fed right in front. And Ryan, right there hugging that far post, was able to make the save and hold on. Persistence almost paying off there for Keith Martin as he went to the outside, got off a weak wrist shot, but it was caught up once again in the skates of Brad Ryan. And Ryan held on. You're seeing more and more, Bill, how Lake Superior State likes to line up across the blue line, three across, and simply let their forwards do some back checking and make the forwards of the uh, offensive team, in this case UIC, work for their ice position. Yeah. Well, we sure have seen that in this first period, and then they'll dump it in and go to work. Roll up their sleeves and uh, take that blue collar approach. Just go in there and really uh, try to get the job done. Face off coming to the right of Ryan. It's Reese in there. Reese facing off against uh, Craig Hewson. Puck comes loose. Hiver has it, feeds it behind the net. And we do we have a delayed penalty coming up here? I think so. And it will be against Lake Superior, apparently, as the puck is cleared outside the zone. But uh, UIC still has it. Reese, if he can get to it, now the penalty will be called as the goaltender Axelby went behind the net. A delayed penalty call. And we will have uh, the penalty coming up. Let's pick up the official's mic here and we can uh, find out as he comes over uh, what the call is. All right, we won't get that. 
Tune into Sports Vision in 1986 to follow the Flames. Don't miss Sports Vision's coverage of basketball and hockey. The next telecast is set for January 7th when the Flames host Valparaiso in basketball. Right here, only on Sports Vision, Chicago's winners on cable. And while we were mentioning that, you, the official came over, and we'll get the uh, official announcement here if we can as to what that penalty is. As Bob Henry, the uh, referee, went over and whispered it into the ear of the uh, uh, officials uh, at ice level. And so the man who is going into the box is uh, Jim Rock, a junior from Sudbury, Ontario. Number five scorer on the team last year. Say, the guy in the oh, don't worry about that. Put that up there. We'll get the guy. Believe me, we'll get the guy. Put another two up. Not sure. He says put another two up. This could be a uh, four-minute minor uh, here. There could possibly be a bench penalty assessed in addition to uh, the minor to Rock. Two and two. All the way to the two-minute bench minor. I think what uh, referee Bob Henry is saying is that he'd like uh, to assess the bench minor to uh, Lake Superior State and afford UIC a two-man advantage. Indeed, that's what it's going to be. So uh, two minors, two, a pair of two-minute minors here. Jim Rock is in for two. The bench minor will be served by, served by Mike Warris. So you have a Sudbury combination in the box right now. And UIC with a tremendous power play opportunity here. And we'll see what happens. Great opportunity for UIC to try to do something here. Omquist digging it into the corner. Looking, fed across. Thought about a shot, it goes to Nelson on the near side. Nelson, and I'm not sure who that other man is. Puck fed in the slot, Nelson fan on the shot. The second time he's been in that spot, and he's fan on both of them. Clearing pass, the other man, Darren Alexander, was in there to start the power play off. So the Lakers have picked up their third penalty here in rather rapid fashion. And the power play is on for UIC. Nelson winds up, cranks and fires it, hit traffic, it is skate right in front of the net or else that would have been in the back of the net. As a hit, Omquist skate. Here's a feed right in front and Omquist could not get his uh, shooting uh, uh, hand loose there for uh, an opportunity to try to wrap one in. Here's Nelson, fed behind the net. Our play is on. And it is a two-man advantage. Nelson thinking about it, a shot and it hit a skate. And stayed in play. They'll try it again. Feed to Nelson, he drives another one and hit traffic. Boy, and I'll tell you, XLB is really getting a workout. Down to 54 seconds on this pair of penalties, these two-minute minors. Darren Alexander fed over to the far wing side. Shot faked, Alexander got it back again to Nelson. He's taken the majority of the shots. Here he comes again, a wrist shot, and this one goes behind the net. And once again, UIC comes up dry. Of a 5-3 advantage and have been unable to score against this defensive team. Again, Nelson, and he drives it wide this time. Wide to the near side. Alexander keeps it in the uh, goal area inside the uh, blue line. 25 seconds remaining. Nelson again with an opportunity. Fed it across this time. Omquist couldn't drive it in. 19 seconds remaining on the penalty. Great opportunity here. UIC would hate to see this get past the boards. Puck tipped away. Uh, 10 seconds remaining. The, puck, the zone will have to be cleared. Alexander with it. He dumps it in high off of the glass. Four seconds left on the penalty. They battle for it. Trent Reese tried to get the puck away, centered it one second. The penalty is over. And believe it or not, Lake Superior State has killed it with no damage done. Grant Clark with it. Puck fed behind the net. Ryan there to set it up. Pressure was on, dumped it to the near wing boards. Omquist had it for a moment. Goes to center ice. Here come the uh, Flames now. Clank brings it in. He's checked off of the puck and he went hard to the ice. He's up, he's okay. Here's a breakout, a hard shot, and it's turned away. The shot taken there by Scott Johnson. It was turned away by Ryan. Kept in the zone, centering pass, and Johnson tried to jam that one in, but it was too high for him. To center ice, the puck goes. Boy, Lake Superior putting on the pressure, and the counterattack. Torrey brings it across. Puck cleared to center ice. Torrey dumps it in high, and offside is called, and that will stop the play. Good effort by Lake Superior, killing that penalty off. Excellent. Credit the three-man unit of Dean Dixon, Terry Hasek, and Mark Petrorek with an excellent uh, performance. You know, Lake Superior State ranks second overall in the CCHA on the penalty killing unit. They have allowed just 26 goals and 98 attempts. And that's why you see a low-scoring club like Lake Superior State bidding for the top spot in the league because they give up very few goals. All right. From the draw, Lake Superior gets it in its own end. 
Puck off of the glass in center ice. They battle for it. And coming up with the puck and moving it ahead, Paul Gerard brings it in. Taken away to center ice. Now dumped in. It hits a UIC defender well above the slot to center ice. And Chapdelaine trying to get to the puck. Taken away. Umpless lost it. Went around in a circle. Or rather, uh, Mayich lost it. Could not contain it. Here is a shot from a bad angle, and Ryan holds on. That puck really challenged him. I didn't think he anticipated as good of a shot as he got from Kim McIver, who really challenged him as he was hugging that far post. Kim McIver accepting the drop pass from Paul Gerard. He went into the far corner, giving him a bad angle to shoot, but yet he put it on goal, and Ryan gloved it there. You get a good shot of Brad Ryan. Face off to the right of the UIC goaltender as Lake Superior State leads. 1-0, 144 remaining here in the first period. And referee Bob Henry is waiting to drop the puck. It'll be Seaver in there. He will face off against Craig Houston. To the right of Brad Ryan, who has been good in goal. Lake Superior is nine shots in goal for the period. UIC three, and there's another one swept inside. Puck goes over to the far wing boards, taken there by Palumbo, trying to center. He'll bring it up. Goes over to the near wing side. Boy, Pachorek thought about a shot. Trying to get to the... Uh, Puck is uh, McIver, or Craig Houston rather, cleared to center ice, and here comes UIC. Puck is loose, but Chorek got it. Fed across, and Palumbo brought it in. This is the guy who scored that winner. That, speaking of that six to nothing lead that UIC lost in the game last year, but it was the big goal by Palumbo that won it. Now coming across for UIC, Rosinski, and he is met, and uh, into the boards, he and the puck goes, and play is stopped. The only score in this game. There you see uh, Mike Rosinski. He is a uh, key man. He's one of those guys. He's going to be on the select team also. Both he and uh, Sean Cronin will be participating in that select team. And they will play against uh, both the Soviet Union and Czechoslovakia. Those games will take place first week of January up in Troy, Michigan. Here we will have a face-off coming up. A minute one showing on the scoreboard clock. Well, well, to play. Hope you're enjoying college hockey tonight as we bring it to you here on Sports Vision. Puck sent ahead and offside is called at the blue line and was uh, in there too deep. Kind of a traffic jam over there along that far side. I don't know how they ever figured out who was in there too deep. That's not an easy job, you know, being a linesman, trying to keep an eye on everything, That's especially in a situation like that where you have a lot of traffic. It's not easy to tell who's in and who's out. And yet they elect to go unhelmeted. <laughs> they have the option to use them, but they don't, and I don't know why. Nobody said they were smart. <laughs> <laughs> Just that it was a tough job. <laughs> well, we're, we're not in the uh, business of running anybody down. We only say that facetiously, of course, but you're right. I wouldn't want to be out there without a helmet. Ryan with a nice kick save knocked away uh, high in the slot area as they battle for the puck. Uh, the shot was on. Nice backhander in front. Ryan has to fall on the puck as the shot was taken by Grant Clark on a nice feed from behind the net, and Clark then tried to follow, but Ryan had covered it, and play had stopped by then. Once again, UIC having trouble behind their own net. There you see Scott Johnson. The centering pass comes out to number 14, Mike DeCarl. DeCarl with a quick wrist shot. He tried to go over the right shoulder of Ryan, but Ryan straightened up, made the save, and then flopped on the puck. Young freshman, several freshmen. He is from California. Mike DeCarl played at, in Covina. Actually, he got most of his experience uh, and Minnesota with the Austin Mavericks of the USHL, United States Hockey League, that is, to say, a minor league level for the amateur uh, uh, level. Puck going toward the direction of center ice, but kept in the zone. Ends up behind the net, battles on for it. Jim Rock going behind the net, trying to get to it. Over to the near wing boards. We have a one to nothing Lake Superior lead down to five seconds remaining. He'll try to get off a last shot. It is cleared out of there with two seconds. One second, that's it. No offside. And so the first period comes to an end as uh, there was only one goal in the period. And that's the scoring summary as we have it. Palumbo getting goal number 13 assisted by Dixon and Houston. The time of the goal, 12.47 for the period that made it a one to nothing hockey game. Shots on goal for the first period. How about that? Lake Superior generated nine here, Chris, and UIC only three. Yeah, UIC, I thought, had the better of the opportunities early on in the game, but then they decided to back off, and it cost them later on. Palumbo caught UIC off guard and notched his 13th goal. Well, in between periods, interviews coming up. We told you about them. Mike Mersh, we're going to be meeting along with Sean Cronin, so stay tuned for that, and you and I will be back. We'll review first period action. All next, coming up here on Sports Vision. The 
home of king size discounts is Ray Harris King Nissan, the Midwest's largest Nissan dealer. Ray Harris, the king of Nissans, believes nobody sells Nissan. Meet during this intermission two of the guys who really have a lot to say about what happens on this hockey team and are very vital elements. One of them, the guy we're going to talk with first, is Mike Mersh. He's from the north side of Chicago, northern suburbs of Chicago in the Skokie area, and a very undergo guy. He won the Unsung Hero Award, kind of an official award that they hand out around here. Mike, great to visit with you and uh, kind of size up this season. Let's chat a little bit about the team goals because I know you're very interested in the uh, in the team element and, and the contribution that you make. Let's talk a little bit about where you see this team right now, these Flames, and where they hope to get. Well, the first part of the season, we're struggling along a little bit. And uh, while we're coming upon Christmas time, this is starting the second half of the season. And uh, hopefully the second half we can pull it up a little bit. You have a background, came from Skokie, Illinois. Give us an idea how a guy from the Chicago area gets into the game and just the route that he follows. Well, I grew up, you know, around Chicago where hockey's not quite that big as in other states. And uh, I just stuck it out. Uh, went to high school in Notre Dame and uh, played four years there. Ran into some good coaches, some good people along the way. And uh, just kept working at it and, you know, things just came along. You're a guy who went to junior college. You took the junior college route, and uh, how did that fit into the play? I guess you ended up at College of DuPage, wasn't it? Yes, I played there for a year and uh, got a lot of exposure out there and uh, happened to just uh, catch the eye of Mike Kemp, who was recruiting here at the time, Yes. and uh, ended up here playing here. Well, you got to know Mike very well. That's good to know. Mike yeah. is at the University of Wisconsin now. I've had a chance to work with him and some telecasts. He's an outstanding guy. You're quite a weightlifter, I understand. Give us an idea what the regimen is. Do you keep it up during the season? Uh, during the season, I try to go two days a week uh, with practice and games and all of that. Can't go all out like during the summer, but uh, just enough to keep in shape and uh, you know keep things going. Mm -hmm. How do you go about setting your routine in terms of how much you'd like to be able to lift? Uh, uh, during the summer, I just... Uh, well, work out a lot with the guys on the team, and I uh, really don't set much goals. Just work at it, and the goals tend to, you know, come as as you work. All right, Mike. Look, we want to thank you very much, and all the best to you. Go out and get them tonight. All right, thank you. All right, Mike Mersh, our guest. When we come back, we'll be visiting with the other half of what they call the Twin Towers here at UIC. That's not Samson and Elijah one. That's Cronin and Mersh. And we'll be back to talk with Sean Cronin in just a minute. It's been called a macho soap opera. Cronin. Sean, congratulations. Uh, give us the circumstances under which you found out about the honor. Uh, it happened in the locker room. I, I really had, didn't know anything about it, and the coach came out and said that uh, he'll be missing another player with the select team, <laughs> and uh, mentioned my name. It was quite a surprise. Mm -hmm. You are from Michigan now. What were the circumstances that uh, you decided on UIC? Well, they were real, real interested when I played my in juniors in Detroit, and uh, they kept after me for the two years talked to me a little bit and um, I would like the school down here and I also have relatives in Joliet mm -hmm. so I decided to come down. Oh, that's great that's great. What, did Val Belmonte recruit you or uh, what were the circumstances on it? I was um, Mark Mazzolini. Sure. I uh, was with him for two years and he was a really fine coach. You also are an avid weightlifter. I would imagine uh, you and Mike probably spend a little time together. It seems to be like a team sport almost these days. Uh, when did you get uh, attached to weightlifting? When did it become important for you? Oh, about five years ago. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, my friends lift a lot, and they like keeping in shape, so mm -hmm. I just went with them, and I caught on, and I really enjoyed it. Sean, on every team, we know there are guys who have to be able to carry the load and protect their players, the so-called, I don't know if you call it enforcer role or what you might describe it as, but usually, tr traditionally, the defensemen play that role in making sure that things go right physically on the ice. How do you handle that responsibility? Well, um, I like to look after my players. If there's uh, being on the ice, if that could help them out a little bit to uh, go in the corners a little more, um, I like to uh, help them out. You know, um, it's a team sport. And uh, if it makes our freshmen feel a little more comfortable out there, um, I'll help them out. Yeah, exactly. What'd you get the nickname The Wall? Tell me about that. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, it happened my freshman year. Uh, it seemed like when people try to run into me, uh, they kind of usually got the worst end of the deal. <laughs> I believe that. Um, but uh, it just stuck with the uh, last three years. All right, Sean, all the best to you. Thanks for taking time to chat with us. Thank you. All right, Sean Cronin, our guest. When we come back here between periods, Chris Matson and I will be reviewing the play on the ice and looking ahead to the next period right here on the
much pace, it seems, Chris, kind of a game. Both Cubs playing pretty much true to form right now, Bill. As we may mention in the pregame, Lake Superior State elects to dump the puck a lot and chase it. And UIC, on the other hand, they've tried to carry the puck over the Lake Superior State blue line. They've been caught up ice simply because Lake Superior likes to line up across that blue line and force the play. That first goal was set up, and we're going to have a chance to watch it again. Uh, Dixon's feed was tremendous on this. Excellent feed by Dixon across ice. Here you see Palumbo coming in. He simply outraces the UIC defense. He now has Brad Ryan one on one. Goes to the forehand. Let's fly with a quick wrist shot over the left shoulder of Ryan for a one nothing tally. And that was all she wrote in the first period. Dixon and Houston on the assist. Made it a one nothing hockey game. How do you assess the performance of the goaltenders we've seen here? I think they've been excellent. I think Brad Ryan has done very well in his own zone, cutting down the angles because he was caught in a couple of three on one, two on one situations. On the other hand, Axelby has pretty much gone uncontested in this hockey game. A couple of early chances for UIC. Of course, they squandered the uh, two man advantage yeah. on the power play. All right, well, stay tuned. We have second period action coming up, and we'll see how it goes as the Flames tangle with the Lakers next here on Sports Vision. have gotten a good workout. They have been up to the occasion. Exelby, as you look at right here, Randy Exelby has twirled a shutout through the first 20. It features an excellent glove hand as part of his game. Former CH CCHA Player of the Week for his performance last year. Came in tonight with a 3.69 goals against. A good, good man. Brad Ryan, a young man who uh, started out. This guy had a tough time. He began the season as a starter a year ago, then was shelved, and then had to come back strong in order to regain his starting spot. Of course, he gave up that starting role to Jim Hickey, who came on in the second half of last week's game against Bowling Green, the 4 nothing loss set to Bowling Green. All right, the team's reverse ends. The Flames will move from left to right as we begin the second period. They are in the light-colored home uniforms, the light-colored tops, anyway. Uh, Vachorek tried to uh, wrap it around the boards a little bit on the near side. It's kept in the zone by Darren Alexander. Puck comes to center ice. Flames come up with it, and uh, Rosinski tries to backfeed it against the near wing boards. They get tangled up a little bit. Scott Johnson was bouncing around, kind of like a ping pong ball. Puck dug out by DeCaro, looking for an opportunity. Feeds it behind the net, and uh, good check. Puck was taken away. Alexander fed it right there in the slot, but nobody was home, and it was knocked away by the defense. Now here come the Lakers on the attack. DeCarl brings it across. Down he goes, and the puck comes up behind Ryan. They battle for it. Alexander couldn't get over there. Trent Reese is there, and we have a penalty coming up. A cross check was called. As it appeared, DeCarl was really jammed into those boards pretty well, so the power play opportunity. Let's listen. Good Chicago, number 28 minor cross check. Here's he played developing deep in the UIC zone as it appears as though UIC Sean Cronin will get the gate. And now here we see another cross check. Actually could have been two penalties on that same play. First Cronin taking a man down the corner, then Darren Alexander coming in out of nowhere with the cross check. Indeed, he got it, as it turned out, so he will be going in the box. That's the second power play opportunity now for the Lake Superior Lakers. Second penalty called against UIC, and the third and fourth penalty minutes uh, assessed against the Flames. Now, so it is a 5-1-4. Lake Superior State trying for an advantage here. See if they can add to their one goal lead at the moment. Uh, Dean Dixon is on the ice. He has the puck from the near side, brings it in, fakes the shot. And Ryan was right there and really did not buy the fake that time as Houston uh, fake behind him and then tried to come forward to try to wrap it around on him and Ryan was there and stopped. Exactly, there Houston hoping that uh, Ryan would go post to post. There you see the fake at the point as Dixon feeds it off to Houston. He'll come right to the side of the net, tries to go to the backhander, then tries to stuff it in but it was Ryan who pinned it up against the cords. It's a nice view from our end zone camera. You could really see him try to use that backhand to try to sneak it through there. That's what a goaltender has to face. It's uh, that, that view exposed how difficult it is to play, even hugging the post, how hard it can be. Face off to Ryan's left. Still have a one to nothing hockey game. The puck, Dixon tried for it. It's kept in the zone. And Rock will fire a shot. And that time Ryan was able to make the save under heavy pressure. Dean Dixon was right there, and he had to knock him off of the crease himself. Clink tried to knock it away. Could not do so. Dixon is there. Now it's knocked the length of the ice and almost put on goal. We have a minute 19 remaining on the penalty to Darren Alexander for a cross check. At center ice, full head of steam. And that time Rock had it for a moment, was checked off of the puck and went to center ice. Good forward checking by Reese. 
trying to work hard. Now he'll put some pressure on and forces Rock all the way back into his own end, all of which kills more time. That's the name of the game. Johnson brings it in. Feed by Dixon right in front, and Ryan was there as he anticipated. Scott Johnson kind of breathing down on him and held on to the puck. Once again, Dixon working the puck, and Brad Ryan equal to the task. You get a good shot of the UIC netminder. Yeah. Young man who has really responded in the last few games especially. 56 seconds remaining on the penalty to Alexander. As we're just under two minutes old here in the second period of play. One to nothing, Lake Superior State. CCHA hockey here on Sports Vision tonight from the draw, kept in the zone, and a hard shot going over the top of the goal by Chapdelaine, hit the glass behind Ryan, but behind the net, and Cronin broke it up nicely on the centering pass. Cronin was right there, read it perfectly, and the zone is cleared. Hey, here comes Reese with a puck. He has a one-on-one. -on -one. Reese carries it in, backhands it behind the net. Wanted to just kill some time, and decided that uh, the best thing for him to do, here's Reese with a steal behind the net. But he's jammed up against the board, the puck comes loose. And UIC has some pressure on right now. Great forechecking by the Flames. What a job, Almquist was there to put on some pressure. That probably killed another 20 seconds. Easily. Very good job. Buck and center ice, Reese intercepts it, flips it up into the air, more time killed. Down to nine seconds remaining on the penalty. The Flames may have a chance to kill it off with no damage being done. Puck is brought in by Johnson, tried to center, fed it across, a hard shot by Martell. Ken Martell, a defenseman, goes over the glass and the penalty is over and the teams are now at full strength. Here's a takedown in center ice by Vic Stinsky as he almost put a bear hug on one of the flames and uh, indeed will be headed into the box for that transgression. Number seven, minor holding. The freshman from North Battleford, Saskatchewan, that is the uh, third power play opportunity coming up for the flames now. The play is headed out to the neutral zone. Here you see Tommy Almquist and there you see the bear hug applied by Mr. Stinsky. <laughs> sending Almquist sprawling to the ice and UIC will now take over on their third power play opportunity of the night. They are 0 for 2 thus far. Seaver, Clank, Armstrong, Torrey, and I'm not sure about the fifth one. Is it uh, Reese? Or uh, no, it's a defenseman. I think it may be Mike Mersch uh, who's out there. Defensively, we'll pick it up in a moment. He has his shoulders to us, and I can't quite read his number at the angle that he's been. Here's Armstrong with it. Feeds it behind the net. It is Mersch, who is the fifth one uh, on the power play unit for the Flames. That's Mersch right there, the guy we were talking about. Goes behind the net. Seaver has it. He has Clank to the near side. That's Clank looking for a target. Seaver right in front of the net. Can't get turned around. It goes back. They'll work it out away from the goal. Hard shot by Mersch, and it whistles wide chance to tip it in. Torrey digs the puck out with help from Armstrong. Looks to backhand in front of the net. Puck comes loose. Goes to Clank. The angle's too steep. Tried to feed it in front. Puck stolen away. Lake Superior clears the zone. Remember, they've already killed one five-on-three penalty tonight. So uh, this team is very adept defensively. They are just very solid. Clank at center ice. It's brought in by Seaver, and he's checked hard. Nice defensive job that time by Mike DeCarl, young freshman. Poked the puck away and just really tied Seaver up. It couldn't do anything. Puck is dumped in, goes behind the net. Hurts dumped it in. Over to the near wing boards, and the zone is cleared, and we now are looking at 57 seconds left on the penalty. Darren Alexander, we have a line change for the Flames. And around, kept in the zone. Torrey goes over to get it. Has Clink in front of him. Here he comes. Feed to Clink, he'll bring it in. Looking, pass up the middle for Rosinski, was cutting right up the slot. And, uh, nothing going there. The feed in front, Clank was broken up, nicely done. And the zone is cleared. Once again, Lake Superior State, nothing fancy, but Dean Dixon, a hard shot, and that time Ryan had to turn that one over the glass. And 20 seconds left on the penalty, the clock stopped at 15.20 remaining in the period. Dean Dixon trying to turn the tides against UIC, trying to come up with a shorthanded tally and spot his club a 2 nothing ballot uh, advantage. Rather. There you see him one on one, fakes the slap shot, cuts inside, takes the shot using Alexander as the screen, and Ryan makes the deflector save. Well, Ryan challenged to his right. You see that puck flipping clearly out of play, coming right up in your direction, the viewers at home. 20 seconds left on the penalty, and they'll face off to the right of uh, Brad Ryan. We've had only one goal in this game. Nick Palumbo scored it 
At the time, we thought it was Mark Vermette, the young freshman, number 23. It turned out to be Palumbo, number 25. And that's the only goal we've had in this game to the moment. They battle for the puck. Still loose in there along the near wing boards. And now they'll go ahead and stop playing. We'll have a faceoff coming up to Ryan's right. Frank Reese was in there trying to jam it. Mike Mersh, the guy you've heard from between periods, and uh, Junior from Skokie, Illinois, plays at Niles, Notre Dame. The unsung hero. Classic example. What all that all means, I don't know how much of a hero he is, but we do know he can't sing. That's why we say he's unsung. <laughs> Out of the zone, it goes to center ice. Lake Superior with it. Jeff Delane had an earlier penalty and an offside is called as the penalty expired simultaneously with the calling of that offside. The team's now at even strength and uh, we'll have a face-off in center ice. Once again, Lake Superior State frustrating the Flames on the power play. Flames are now 0 for 3 on the night. They came into this game ranked 6th in the CCHA. They are now just 16 of 25 in league play. And uh, three power play opportunities for the Flames tonight. Two for the Lakers. Neither team has been able to do anything in terms of scoring on the power play. So the defenses have predominated here tonight. It's been a defensive flavored game. From the draw, Chapdelaine gets it, feeds it across, and trying to go in is Scott Johnson for it, and the automatic offside is called as Ryan went back and touched the puck. And uh, Chris didn't really matter anyway. Once it crosses that goal line, the offside is automatic. And so this one will be coming the full length of the ice, and will be the puck will be dropped to Exelby's right. So you get a good shot of Coach Val Belmonte in the Argyle sweater, seated directly in the middle of the UIC bench. Belmonte, rather, in his fourth season with a 34-92-3 record. He's done a great job here. Don't let that record confuse you or deceive you for one minute. He took a very difficult situation here, has come a long way. For those of you that are interested, you'll be happy to know that Val Belmonte is wearing an identical pair of socks to that Argyle sweater, and that is a man who is well-dressed. <laughs> Well, we have a little altercation away from the action, and I don't think they're talking about socks. Nelson is in there for the faceoff. And tied up there by uh, Grant Clark. Far wing boards, they go for it. Euclid missed on a check. Here comes Lake Superior out of there. As they bring it through space, puck is dumped in. Clark was a little hesitant about it at first, brought it in. Now comes up with a puck. Had uh, somebody lose uh, some of his gears, a little gear loose on the ice. One of the gloves, I think. Here's Scott Johnson behind the net. Checked into the board. Good job by Hugland. And, whoa, and then we had uh, one of the uh, Lake Superior players, DeCarl, kind of swung that stick a little high. I was worried he might catch somebody with a butt end there. Nearly did. You always hope when you watch a game like this one, especially in a close contest, that the chippiness won't carry over. Last week, things got carried away in a 4-0 loss to Bowling Green, and Tommy Almquist took a run at Tom Pratt of the Falcons, and Pratt suffered a dislocated kneecap. He had to carry him off on a stretcher in that hockey game. So we've talked about it before, Bill, about how players seem a little bit more invincible at this point with uh, protection head to toe. Well, and of course we know, and I guess they probably know too, if they take time to think about it, they are anything but invincible. And uh, I, uh, I uh, share your beliefs. I like to see the, uh, the finer elements of the game, as you see an offside there. This will be coming back. I like to see the finer elements of the game portrayed. And I think that's the great thing, the great thing that college hockey can bring us that perhaps we don't get as much from the National Hockey League as we'd like to see. At the college level, we can uh, see these, uh, the finer points of the game emphasized and perhaps a little bit less of the physical nature of it. Well, of course, most coaches are going to a control-type offense, as you're seeing a good shot right there of Scott Seaver, who played two seasons with arch rival Ferris State before coming over to UIC. Six minutes old here, second period of play. It is a one to nothing hockey game. And they'll draw to the right of Seaver, or to the left of Orion, rather. And they going into the corner is uh, Stinsky. Kind of challenge there a little bit. Puck comes loose. Seaver is there to get it, feeds it across. And uh, that puck between the skates of Paul Torrey. Now Clank brings it in, knocked off of the puck. And we have a three on two. Cote brings it across. He is checked there. Puck comes through. Ooh, and a hard check thrown there by Mike Juarez, the junior. He, got, he served that bench penalty earlier in this game. He was drafted by Winnipeg. There's several players who were drafted in the NHL here and are on the ice tonight. Puck nearly comes loose. Oh, man, there's a lot of bodies scattering. Here's a hard shot, and Ryan just got a, a little bit of a stick on that and uh, was able to turn that one aside as the shot came from Clark just inside the blue line, and a whistle stops play and a penalty 
will be called here. I believe Sean Cronin is going to go off for interference as uh, referee Bob Henry made the uh, signal right in front of us at the scorer's booth. Cronin takes a seat, and with that, uh, Lake Superior will move to their third power play opportunity of the night. They're 0 for 2 to the moment. UIC. Six thirty-five is the time of the penalty, and so the two-minute power play that will be on here, and the power play unit for Lake Superior includes Jim Rock. We'll pick up the rest of them in a moment. Rock is on there. Dean Dixon, kind of a sniping centerman, who is capable of doing a pretty good job uh, for this team. Grant Clark is on the ice. That's Dixon. With it, we were just talking about him. Also, I think Scott Johnson is in there right now. Nice little back feed. Puck is brought in. And Dixon tried to carry it over. He got a feedback from a teammate. We'll go in the near wing boards. Craig Houston rounds out that unit. That's Houston with a puck now. Looking for a target. Feeds it. Houston, return pass. Here's a hard shot in front. Ryan was there, made the save on it. As uh, trying to get in front of it was Nick Palumbo, the other member of that unit, and the only goal scorer here tonight. And uh, so the play is stopped. We talked about it earlier. Gerard has a wicked slap shot from the point. A little bit of give and go. Comes right back out to the point, And Gerard just one times it. And there you see UIC coming over as both the Mersh and his uh, defensive partner. In this case, Steve Huglin coming over and helping out goaltender Brad Ryan, who held on and forcing the face off to the left of the UIC goaltender. Uh, you, uh, Jamie Huskin has come onto the ice here to try to help kill this penalty. Seaver is on the ice. Mersh, you, know, you can't miss it, or excuse me, uh, Knutson, six footer from Roosevelt, Minnesota, is on the ice. We have a minute 24 remaining on the penalty being served by Sean Cronin. Normally, of course, he would be used extensively in penalty duty as well, but uh, in this situation, he's uh, going to have to watch his teammates do the work for him. They'll reset in here as. Uh, Henry Reamer, I think that's Henry Reamer in there. Yep. Oh no, uh, it's Knutson in there on the draw. Did get it, but the puck went over and uh, fed in behind the net. Armstrong, I think, is also in there to try to help uh, kill off a portion of this uh, penalty. Here's Gerard. Look for the big shot. A hard howitzer, and it's driven off of the glass. Man, can he fire that puck? He can really make that biscuit move as well as anybody we've seen. Here's a shot that hit traffic in front of the goal. UIC was ready for that. Seaver comes up with it and drives it out of trouble. Goes all the way down the ice. Make it Armstrong, uh, or Darren Alexander, rather, who got done on that crunch. And uh, here comes Lake Superior State now as the puck goes to center ice. It's brought across. Feed to the near side, and it goes to McIver looking for a target. Fed out front. Here's a hard drive. It's traffic right in front. The rebound. Ryan managed to steer it beside the rebound by Scott Johnson, who was there at point blank range. Here's Hasek looking with it. Here's a drive, and a shot was blocked. Didn't get much steam on it either as uh, Jim Rock that time uh, fanned on the shot, and it was blocked by the defense. Down to 14 seconds remaining on the penalty. Here's Gerard. Feeds it over on the near side. Rock with it. Looking for a centering opportunity. Hasek looking. Feeds it and going behind the net. Little wraparound attempt. Ryan turns that aside with no difficulty. Penalty is over. The teams are at even strength. And we may have a delayed penalty coming up here again. Delayed penalty coming up. And it will be against uh, UIC apparently as they finally were able to clear it. Jamie Huskin finally got his uh, stick on the puck and cleared it and we'll see what this is about. White winner, high stick. High sticking is the call and that will put uh, Darren Alexander in the box for the third time in this hockey game. That is the fourth penalty against UIC. Uh, or fifth, excuse me, uh, you know, fourth, fourth, correct that, uh, fourth and so the fourth power play opportunity coming up for the Lakers. Which they have been dry. Here's the announcement. I think it's simply a case of where uh, the lesser of two evils are canceling each other out. UIC ranks eighth on the penalty killing unit, while uh, Lake Superior State at the same time ranks seventh on the power play efficiency ratio. 
penalty minutes assessed for the game stand right now at six for UIC, ten for uh, Lake Superior. But uh, in this situation, they've had a couple of recent ones here assessed. Excuse me, let's make that uh, eight apiece. Eight apiece, we take that back as each team has had uh, four minor penalties here. We have players going down just inside the blue line trying to get that puck out of trouble. And play is stopped. They get a good shot of fiery freshman Trent Rees, who did an excellent job out at the points, forcing the play, and in turn falling on top of the puck, forcing the faceoff inside the UIC blue line. Hardworking young man. Played in the Alberta. They have a, uh, a uh, junior league there that's very well known. Boy, Lake Superior. You see they're going to do a little work on his nose. He's drawing a little bit of blood. Lake Superior in shots. Total for the game, 15-3 to over UIC. That means UIC has not had a shot in the second period through the first nine minutes. How about that? Here comes Lake Superior now. And they have a 5-4 man advantage here. They bring it across. Defensively, it has been a very, very tight game. Okay with it. Fed to the side. A shot whistles wide by Vachorek. He's dangerous in that spot. Zone is cleared. And it goes up over the glass and out of play. Minute 22 remaining in the period or on the penalty, excuse me, 10.34 on the game clock for the second period of play. It's still a one to nothing hockey game. And we'll have a change of lines here during the uh, period prior to the faceoff. Hmm. You see Robbie Klink taking a seat on the back of the UIC bench. Klink last year was the highest scoring freshman on this team. 18 goals, 10 assists, good for 28 points. Yeah. Quite a high school player too, not only in, uh, in uh, hockey, but he lettered in soccer and baseball. I like Val Belmonte a lot when he met him, and that influenced his decision very much to come to UIC. And Rob is a very personable, or uh, Val uh, Belmonte is a very personal guy. I can see why Rob got to like him so much, as uh, we all come to know him and like him. Battle for the puck in center ice. Comes loose. And it is brought in. Now well, the zone is clear. Good defensive effort there by uh, Huglin, Steve Huglin, as he was able to get the puck away from Rock and drive it out of the zone. 50 seconds remaining on the penalty. And they battle for it. Puck center around the net by Knudsen. Seaver over there. Good checking effort. Yeah, they put a little forward checking pressure on here. And you can see that the Lakers are in trouble getting out of their own end, and that's the name of the game. If you can do that, you're killing off time. 30 seconds remaining on the penalty. Puck brought across. It'll go behind the net. Carrying it is Keith Martin. He's dangerous. Still has it. That out front, Gerard with a big shot. Over to the far wing side. Fed back to Gerard. Thought about it, goes to Martin. He thinks about it. Fed in the slot deep, and leaping out is Ryan as that puck was tipped on goal. Ryan was there to make the stop, and in the process, DeCarl, who kind of flipped that puck, got into a little conversation with one of the UIC defenders. 10 seconds left on the penalty. Play originates out at the UIC point. Here's the quick shot by Keith Martin. The deflection made by DeCarl. The save is made now by Brad Ryan, and there to cover up is Ryan with a UIC defender right on top of him. Brad Ryan has played a very fine game. He has faced 15, now 16 shots uh, in this game, and he stopped all but one of them. I don't know if you could ask too much more from a goaltender than that. To the moment, he's made some tough saves, too. Out of the zone. The zone has pulled the shit kill off the penalty. Seven seconds remaining. And Cote will have to uh, skate down to get it. Look, about, look for Alexander coming out of the box now. If the Flames get possession, it could be an advantage. Penalty's over. Here's Alexander. Comes out. Teams at even strength. Puck brought across. Here's Stinsky. Taken off the puck. Cote nearly got it. Now behind the net. Going with the puck is Vermette looking for a target. He's checked hard. Nice effort defensively by the Flames. And who was it? None other than uh, Mr. Mr. Mersh. He got the job done one again. Mike Mersh. Did a great, great job right there. Puck comes to center ice. And once again, the Lakers have it. Vermette checked off the puck. Coming in is Stinsky. Thinks about it. Feeds it high in the slot. A shot, and Ryan with a magnificent save. And the puck came loose. And I thought he had it for a moment. He robbed Cote of a goal right there. Or it was not, excuse me, it was not Cote. It was uh, Juarez, Mike Juarez, who he robbed of a goal. Really challenged Ryan, and he was up to it. And the puck. Still loose, not frozen yet, it is frozen. At 8.20 remaining for the period and a one to nothing Lake Superior lead. As it stayed intact, there was one early goal in this game and that is it. Boy, Ryan made a nice save just a moment ago. 
coming right into your screen. Here you see Vic Stinsky. He's trying to feather a pass through a maze of players. It comes all the way through to the right side. Wide open is Mike Warris. He just one times it. The leg save is made by Ryan. He failed to cover up as it was caught up in his skates. He inadvertently kicked it to the side of the net. Well, it looked like he just managed to tip that with the with the butt end of his uh, of his uh, stick, as that replay seemed to indicate. Fortunately for the Flames there, but Ryan did make the save. Hung on for dear life. The draw comes to UIC. Jeff Simmer behind the net. Tried to clear the zone. Here's a hard shot up over the uh, the uh, crossbar. Hit the glass behind Ryan. Simmer gets the puck. Looking to bring it out. Well, Lake Superior putting some pressure on. Puck is loose. A hard shot. Ryan managed to get that one aside after the shot by Craig Hewson. Goes into the boards on the near side. Now ahead of scene. Here's Huskin coming up the ice. Puck is brought in. Reese on the right. Here is uh, Puck nearly taken away. Rosinski was trying to do something with it. Get over the far wing side. A shot nearly was nearly put in by one of his own players. That puck was nearly put in by Jim Rock. By accident. Omquist with a check at center ice. Flames come up with it. Reese brings it across. Reese feeds it through traffic. Puck came loose high in the slot. And trying to get to that was Harry Armstrong. And he checked off of the puck. Zone is cleared. Simmer thinks about dumping it back in. Puts it high up into the air. And that time, um, uh, Exelby came way out and feeds it around the glass. We have a whistle sounding, and I wonder if he held on to that too long. Oh, we had a player down in center ice. Player is down in center ice, and that is Dean Dixon, who was uh, the number two scorer on this team coming in tonight. He had one assist on the only goal we've had, and Dixon away from the uh, puck really took a terrible fall. I did not see it, so I don't know what the altercation, but it did happen away from the puck, as we emphasize, in center ice while play was going on. I was under the impression that Dixon was actually heading back to his own bench when he uh, suffered the injury, but he is face down. Dean Dixon, the junior from Euclid, Ohio, met he uh, uh, matched last year's total just a couple of nights ago with his ninth uh, goal of the year, along with 11 assists and 20 points, but he is Face down as he is being attended to by the Lake Superior State trainer. He had a, uh, a great point per game streak last year as a sophomore for this team. He averaged a point per game over a 14 game span. That's when he really came into his own for this team. And he had a great game against UIC last year. He had a goal and three assists in one of their victories last year. And usually is a key man on the penalty killing unit. He is from Euclid, Ohio, and has served as the assistant captain all four years that he has been here. So he's a very integral part of this uh, program. And the trainer, uh, Brian Toy, is out there right now talking with him. And he is very slowly getting up. And so Dixon is all right. Say, if you're a college hockey fan, you will not want to miss College Hockey USA. Tune into Sports Vision each week for highlights from across the country, as well as profiles of top-ranked teams and coaches. College Hockey USA, it's called. And it's here, and exclusively here on Sports Vision. Chicago's winners on cable. Dixon is up, he's okay. And uh, so we'll get back to business here. In a one to nothing hockey game, the clock was stopped at 7.13 remaining. We'll be visiting with athletic director Tom Russo of UIC between periods, between the second and third period. And Chris and I will be going over the review of some of the outstanding plays of the second period. Here's a puck fed up the, right up the center and it hit the post and bounced away, it appeared by uh, after the feeding attempt by Hugland looked like it hit traffic and nearly went into the goal. Here's a feed high, a hard shot taken, it's blocked by the defense. Goes over to the near wing boards, trying to dig it out, was Mersch, put it behind the net, Armstrong was there, looking for an opportunity, two players go down, Armstrong tried to keep control, comes on the near side, Gerard tried to clear, and they get it out. Look out, on the near side, McIver brings it in, whistles one wide, didn't get much on that. Gerard kept it alive. Goes behind the net. McIver is there looking for a target. Gerard fell down. Now McIver goes down. And the Flames will bring it out. Jeff Nelson to center ice. Fed over on the far wing side. Drop pass for Nelson. Fires a shot and it whistles wide. Over on the near wing side. Lake Superior comes up with it. They have a one to nothing lead in this hockey game. McIver brings it across. Goes on the near side to uh, Grant Clark. Behind the net. Or make it to the car or Rock who fed it behind the net. Right. Challenged over there by Darren Alexander. As the Flames continue to try to 
keep anything bad from happening in their own zone. Gerard had it in center ice. To the near side, Hasek feeds it in. Behind the net, Ryan with a back feed. Boy, he got back just in time, too. He fed it blindly, and it was right onto the stick of Scott Johnson for uh, Lake Superior. A dangerous pass behind the net. Here's a hard shot. Ryan got it. The rebound in front. It swept away. Scott Johnson took the shot, and the zone was cleared. Uh, Cote with it. It is dumped in. Clark with it, trying to skate toward the near side. Now Martin with it, and it's fed behind the net. Over on the far wing side, they battle for it. Gerard holds it in. A long shot, nearly tipped in, but it went above the uh, crossbar. That hit traffic in front of the goal, and DeCarl nearly put that in. Now they really go after it. Sean Cronin is there. They don't want to get into anything with Sean Cronin. I want to think twice about that. He's a muscle man. <laughs> they don't call him the wall for nothing, you know. As he said, uh, everybody just bounces off of everybody when I'm around, and uh, very simply, that's it. Now Terry Mayich wants a piece of somebody. And we will have some penalties coming up here, I am sure. Well, there's a very hard check over there on that side, Chris. It's stop play, and Mayich is headed to the box for sure, and probably also uh, one of the Lake Superior players. So Mayich will go in. Terry Mayich, we'll see what this is all about. Let's pick up the, uh, the microphone that we have right down. Maybe we can get the announcement right here. Yeah. Some bad will being displayed there by Keith Martin, you may have heard. A little, uh, a little bad language in the process. Well, how about this? He, came, he skated out of the box and wanted a piece of my inch. I would be very surprised if Mr. Martin does not get a match penalty. Remember last week it was Majic, ironically, who picked up a match penalty against Bowling Green in the second period of that contest with the Falcons. He was lost for the remainder of the Friday night game as well as the Saturday night game. Let's see if we can pick up uh, how this will all be sorted out. That's the first real bad feeling we've had displayed in this hockey game to the moment. And now Sean Cronin's going into the box. Let's see what it's about. They're discussing it. Nineteen. That's Keith Martin. Or it could be my edge for that matter. All right, Chicago, number three, minor roughing. Chicago, number 19, minor high stick. Suzanne Marie, number 19, five minutes, spearing major. See if we can relive this a little bit on how it all happened. Playing the UIC zone, there you see Martin gloves up one on one against Sean Cronin. Cronin forearms him. Martin takes out his own man. Now Cronin is trying to hold on to the puck for ice position and gain a face off to the right of his own goaltender. He throws an elbow and lets Martin go flying. Now another uh, Lake Superior State player comes into the fray, and that's when it all broke loose along the near boards. Cronin pinned up against those boards. There you see Armstrong with a strong arm on uh, the Lake Superior State player. And then off uh, at the top of your screen, you can just see their skates now. That was uh, Mayich and Martin going at it once again. And that's uh, where the fracas all broke loose. There you see Martin with a stick uh, to the chest of Armstrong, and uh, the referees intervene. Once again, a strong case yeah. for helmets uh, for uh, referees and linesmen. Oh, you're really right about that. Uh, You'd get no objection for me on that, Chris. <laughs> How'd you like to be uh, Keith Martin right now? How'd you like to substantiate the fact that you're a criminal justice major? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you see, seeing the uh, justice system in action one way or the other, I guess, this <laughs> is All right. Well, we had the announcement. High sticking against Majic. Cronin with a rough. Those are the two minors. Then a five-minute major for spearing against... Martin plus a game disqualification. That's what we have. So this will be a two minute power play for Lake Superior, will it not to start? And then a three minute power play the other way for UIC. Exactly. Okay, so we'll have four against three here initially. Uh, 
as the announcement is being made, the penalties came at 14 49. Yes, I did count that myself without any help. <laughs> All right, we'll go from center out. Now, uh, that's the uh, look at a rather full scoreboard here. You see all the penalties assessed. And so now it's a triangle zone defense, I believe most teams use. Here's a puck that took a rather unusual ricochet off of the uh, one of the boards. And one makes me wonder if one of the doors was closed all the way there. My goodness. Merce trying to clear his own zone, but he got it inside the penalty box. It came right back out. Face off inside the UIC zone with Lake Superior State leading 1-0 on a goal by Nick Palumbo that came all the way back at 12.47 of the first period. 13 penalty minutes assessed against the Lakers tonight. 12 against UIC, as it turns out. The puck is clear. And of course, uh, with UIC being shorthanded, they have the privilege of uh, icing the puck legally. Um, 4.54 remaining in the period. All the penalties will be expired by the end of this period, but it'll be very tight on that. Dixon brings it across, still carrying the puck. Look out, a backhander! Ryan, a magnificent save, rebound, goal! Ryan stopped the first one, but the rebound was followed in, and it is goal number two for Nick Palumbo. His 14th goal of the year, he has both goals tonight. The rebound shot after the miss by Dixon. Dixon and Palumbo teaming up once again tonight. He goes one on one, goes right around Mike Mersch. He'll come in uncontested on Ryan. Ryan makes a magnificent lay save on the backhander, but there to pick up the pieces was Palumbo. He stuffs in goal number 14 on the season, a two nothing Lake Superior State advantage. 4.41 remaining in the period. We'll pick up the announcement here. Five, Nick Palumbo, second of the game, 14th on the season. The assist goes to number four, Dean Dixon. Palumbo from Dixon, time of the goal, 15-19. Same combination as before, Palumbo got the rebound, put it in the net, it's a two to nothing hockey game now. And one of the men is out of the box. The teams are now at even strength. And a power play will be coming up a minute, 13 seconds from now. We have 422 on the game clock. Here's a feed right across the slot area. And Cote came up with it for a moment. Now it's driven out of the zone. And going back to get it is Alexander. But Sean Cronin beat him to the puck. He's one of the guys who was in the penalty box. Puck fed ahead. Rosinski will bring it in. He's been a quiet man tonight. Rosinski looking toward the near side, taking off of the puck. And the zone is cleared. Cote. Here's a hard shot by McIver. He hangs on, and then the goaltender is run. The goaltender was run at right there as Ryan took a wicked fall on the ice. Mike Juarez coming right up the gut, and I think that's about where he hit him was right in the gut. Tough night for Brad Ryan. He's played outstanding. Here you see the drop pass. Quick shot taken there. Quick save, and now here you see Juarez come in out of nowhere. He simply goes around the UIC defender and labels Brad Ryan. Ryan sprawled on the ice. He is now up and about, uh, getting his wits together. Takes a drink of water, puts on the glove hand, face off to the left of the UIC goaltender. 44 seconds remaining on the penalty to Majic. 344 remaining on the penalty. By the way, Stinsky is serving the penalty for uh, Lake Superior, I should mention. He possesses a 2 to nothing lead in this hockey game. 350 remaining for the period. UIC trying to come out of its own end. 34 seconds away from a power play. Mike Merch, he'll feed it behind the net. And UIC coming out of its own end. Cronin, or excuse me, that's uh, Huglin with it. Behind the net. Huglin looking straight ahead, advanced Armstrong. Brings it to center ice. And Fed Merch on his right. Hook came loose. And Nelson comes up with it. Close to a power play advantage now. Nine seconds left on the first set penalty. And then the power play will be on. Really, it's almost imperative that UIC score. Chap the lane behind the net. Feeds it over to the near wing side. Penalty is over. Now the man advantage goes the other way. The power play is on for UIC. They have not connected yet. Here's a hard shot. And Ryan is there. Thought about dropping it, but decided to hold on. Was frustrated that he could not drop it anywhere. But it made the right move to hold on under those circumstances. And I think the word frustrated pretty much uh, sets the tail here for UIC tonight. They are very poor getting out of their own zone. They have gotten boxed in. Excellent forechecking turned in there by Scott Johnson as well as uh, Dean Dixon. As they hemmed UIC in their own zone, they failed to get out of their zone, yet they have 252 remaining on a major penalty. So even if they score, they would continue to have a yep. power play opportunity. Yeah, so this is a golden opportunity. This is one where you really want to especially go at it if you can. This is the fourth power play opportunity for UIC that they are on now. Puck stolen away. 
Well, you're not going to do anything power play wise if you don't have possession of the puck. That's rule number one. Dean Dixon with it. Now the Alexander comes up with it. Look at Dixon go to work. Just putting some pressure on. Nothing comes easily against this team. Nelson to center ice. Here comes UIC. Alexander, or excuse me, Brzezinski carries it across. Looks for a target. Fires a hard shot. It hit traffic and was to uh, Exelby's right. Counter attack. It's a two on three. Puck carried over. And Dixon uh, finally gave it up. Here's Rosinski. Feeds it ahead to Omquist. Straight up the middle. Off the board. It hit a skate. And Omquist got the rebound. High in the slot. A backhand. A rebound right in front. And it went behind the net. Waiting for it at the time. Uh, it was uh, Rosinski who tried to feed it. A clearing pass kept in the zone. Alexander fired a long shot. It was blocked by Dixon. It's a two on two breakout. Dixon pulls up. We'll have a change as he dumps it into the corner. New set of penalty killers coming on the ice. Minute 51 remaining on the penalty. Two minutes even on the game clock. Second period. Omquist tried to bring it across. Kicked it across. And now it's cleared to center ice. And UIC will have to reorganize here. Everything coming hard. Nearly a breakout for Rosinski. And then he was tied up by a defender. Nice job. Puck just outside the blue line. Zone is cleared. Omquist had one foot in, but not both. Puts it ahead. Kept in the zone. Nice play by Seaver. Here's a hard shot. It was by uh, Armstrong. Armstrong got it back. Looking for a chance to center. Omquist got it. Behind the net. Feed. Hit traffic and is cleared out. Minute seven remaining on the penalty as lines change again. Behind the net. Here's UIC. Now they'll try a rush. They trail two to nothing. They would really like to get one here. Clink. Sped ahead but out of his reach. Cote has it the near wing boards to center ice it goes Mike Mersh kicks it to keep up with it dumps it in they'll chase for it behind the net set up by Exelby who is right now is twirling a shutout Clint got it nice effort behind the net looking to center high in the slot to Olmstead here's a hard drive and it's wide well wide of the net by Mike Mersh kept in the zone by Armstrong oh he had a man open high in the slot too feet for him but it came too late he had Clink open in the slot. They could not get it to him very high, I should point out. Here's a hard shot and a counterattack. And that turned aside by Randy Ryan after the shot taken by Scott Johnson. Down to 16 seconds remaining on the penalty. And the Flames have really not even gotten a good shot on goal here. Here's Clink, last chance. Puck stolen by Dixon, gotten back. Now dumped in the zone. Clink comes up with it, down he goes. And it is cleared out and that should kill the penalty. And it was Nick Colombo, the guy who had both goals. Offside with seven seconds left as the teams are now at even strength. Colombo is the guy who cleared that last one out. And that's a golden opportunity by the boards, Chris. That certainly has to hurt UIC's uh, uh, make up a little bit to, to lose that one. Flames staring perfection right in the face, better known as the penalty killing unit of uh, the Lake Superior State Lakers. They have now killed off five power play opportunities on part of UIC as you get a good Look at the freshman Jeff Simmer, or UIC. Face off will now take place to the right of goaltender Exelby of Lake Superior State. Knutson on the draw for the Flames. Well, you got some shot numbers just a few moments ago that are absolutely incredible. We'll be telling you about them here at the end of the period. Should probably hold pretty close to what they are now. They're unbelievable for, for the game if those numbers hold. And with only seven seconds, there shouldn't be any radical change. Excuse me. And so they'll face off. Knutson there try to get the uh, draw on it. Puck comes loose. They battle for it. It was kicked by, uh, by uh, Omquist behind the net. And with that, the period expires. And once again, we have uh, Huskin running over just to check and make sure his goalkeeper, uh, one of his teammates, is all right. And a very frustrated Brad Ryan looks over to our left. He's uh, not a very happy guy as he sits behind his net and just kind of leans on it, wondering what I have to do. There was one goal scored in the period to make it a 2 nothing hockey game. It was Nick Palumbo from Dixon at 15-19. The shot summary for the period is really incredible here. Stands at 12-1 tw uh, to 1 for the second period for a whopping 23-4 to 4 advantage. Wow, Chris, that seemed the team could generate only four shots. Well, here UIC is just going to have to put on pressure offensively. Three of those four shots were taken by defenseman Mike Mersch, 
has uh, you know UIC is obviously struggling struggling in the offensive zone if I was Randy Exelby I would simply uh, have brought my homework to this hockey game because he could have taken a timeout and, and done it in the uh, amount of shots that he's faced here tonight only four there you get a good shot uh, at Exelby a junior from Toronto Ontario ironically his father Claire played for eight seasons in the Canadian Football League yeah that's right played with Montreal and with Toronto so he has a, comes from an athletic background and is performing very well, twirling a shutout through through uh, two periods. He's in search of his eighth win uh, of the year, and here's a guy who would like to uh, record win number six if he could. He's from Fairbault, Minnesota. Brad Ryan. So we're set for third period action. The team switch ends, and from the draw, UIC has the puck. Over led for Rosinski. Going behind the net is Trent Reese. Couldn't quite get to it. So the Rosinski line is on to start this third period of play. Kicked by Omquist. Goes behind the net. Reese tried to center it behind the net. Uh, Huglin tried to keep it in. Pass right through the slot. Rosinski just couldn't quite trip the hammer on it. Now oh, a reverse shot there. Tried by Reese, and that was flipped wide of the goal. Well, it looks like UIC has come out with a little pressure on Reese. Hits the side of the cage. Tried to reverse it. Omquist behind the net. Tried to wrap it around, and that one is blocked by the defense. So UIC comes out smoking here in the third period. Huglin, did he keep it in? Yes, he did. Reese feeds it up the slot. It's kicked around and nearly right on goal. As a uh, guy who had trouble, uh, Terry Hasek had trouble uh, hanging on to that puck and really kind of misplayed it. Icing as Lake Superior is able to uh, clear the pressure, at least momentarily, so this one will come all the way back. Bill, as I may mention moments ago, the key to a good offense is flooding the zone and forcing the defenseman to cough up the puck, and that's exactly what UIC did there. Both Almquist and Rosinski with excellent opportunities in the opening seconds, just 53 seconds of pass as Lake Superior State still leads in this hockey game, two to nothing. Paul Torrey's line has come on. Torrey will center the line here and uh, tries to uh, get the puck. It's loose in the crease. Rosinski was in there. And uh, here's a hard shot and hit Rosinski's stick or uh, plank stick right in front of the net and I think it may have bounced away. That looked like it was ticketed for the upper right hand corner. Lake Superior State comes out of there with it. They have yet to put on a rush in this game. Puck cleared to center ice. Sean Cronin with it. Dump right back in and on goal. That counts as a shot from center ice. For the near wing boards. Put it right into the crease. What a perfect picture. Perfect pass by Sieber. But nobody was home to put it away. That's when you talk about flooding the zone. Here's Cronin with a shot. Keeps it in the zone. Now it's cleared to center ice. Waiting for it is Alexander. Pumps it right back in. And we had uh, offsides call. This one will be coming back. Cote went back to get the puck. But this one will be coming to center ice. And we'll have a line change. That's a little bit more like it as far as what UIC is capable of doing offensively. As you look at Matt Cote and your picture skating off to the Lake Superior State bench, I agree, Bill. Uh, UIC definitely putting on the pressure here in the early going. They're doing an excellent job pinching it from the points also. And uh, they can take a few liberties with this team because they're not a big scoring team. So uh, that's uh, perhaps some of the conversation. Mayich lost the puck to center ice. Fed ahead by Scott Johnson. Coming in on the far wing, Lake Superior State. Johnson feeds it back across to the near side. That time they got their connections mixed up a little bit as Chap Delane cut in the other direction. Buck is loose. Nelson gets it. Tries to feed it ahead. Still in the zone. Scott Johnson fires a shot that's well wide. Cote tried to reach over and get it. Could not. It's fed in on goal. Locked it high up into the air. Johnson trying to dig it out. Set behind the net. It hit one of the players right in the shoulder. Cote. Rather brief rest. Okay, he came right back on the ice. Jimmy, that's a Mike Morris rather behind the net. Morris gets it back, looks for a target. He had Stinsky in the slot. They couldn't get it to him. Battle's on for it. Kept in the zone. Morris tried to keep it in. Puck bounces out of there finally. And some backskating by Chapdelaine as he went back to get it. Puck stolen by Mayich at center ice. Dumped in. On goal. Axel B up to the challenge. Torrey trying to feed it. Came loose, still in the zone. Cronin with a shot and hit traffic in front of the goal. He hit one of his own men. Oh, we've seen that so much tonight. He hit Trent Reese that time. Fed down. Puck will be turned aside. Goes behind the net. Ryan's done a good job. He can't ask for much more than he's done. He's only given up one goal each period. Rosinski had it. Reese still in the zone. Battle for it. Rosinski keeps it in. Brings it around. Good angle for Omquist here. Didn't do much with it. Puck comes on to the stick of Palumbo. He has both goals. 
Fed ahead on the near side, a breakout, a hard shot, turned aside by Ryan on the shot by Craig Hewson. Behind the centering pass in front, kaboom. Welcome to college hockey. Machorek behind the net. Cronin trying to chase it down, gets there too late. Hewson with it. Reese is in there, they freeze it. And we will have a faceoff to the right of Brad Ryan. And for the second time tonight, uh, Dean Dixon shaken up on the play. He skated off gingerly to the uh, Lake Superior State bench. There you see Sean Cronin, as you may mention earlier, Bill, uh, headed for uh, Troy, Michigan in early January to play in the USA Select game. Kind of lost his stick there for a while, has it back. Track stop, 16-16 remaining, third period of play. Oh, wait, this will be our last telecast, uh, Chris, before the holiday season. We sure want to pass along, not only on behalf of ourselves, but our entire crew and everybody associated with Sports Vision. Best holiday wishes from all of us. And I uh, hope you'll be home. I'll be home with my family in Arizona, and I'm looking forward to seeing them. And I hope you, many of you, get a chance to be with your family, friends, and loved ones. And uh, above all, a very safe holiday season. 16-0 remaining. Seaver dumps it ahead. We have a 2-0 hockey game. Hote, nice effort. He skated and uh, avoided the check. Puck went to center ice, and the Flames regroup. Good. It is dumped in by Mersch. Behind the net, Seaver had it for a moment, lost it. Had an assist added on that second goal of the night to Paul Girard. You might want to just make a note of that, as we've just been informed of that. After watching it, they gave an assist to Gerard. That is number five for him and point number 14. Puck fed ahead. We had a whistle sound. And uh, stoppage of play at 15 and a half minutes remaining in this game. And we have a penalty coming up, it appears. Let's see if we can pick up the uh, public address here. High stick indicated against Siebert. And so he goes in for the first time here tonight. And uh, this will be penalty... Number seven, let's pick up the announcement. Period, number 23, Scott Seaver. A two minute minor for high sticking. Seaver, two minutes for a high stick. Time of the penalty, 4.30. And that will mean the sixth power play opportunity coming up for the Lakers. And the Lakers on the power play this far tonight, as you may have mentioned, one out of five in their previous attempts. They're also now at one, make that 22 out of 104 overall. So that works out roughly to uh, in the 21 and a half percent area, somewhere right around there, which is, would be about average, maybe a little under. So uh, the Flames will have to, before they can try to scale the wall here, they have to uh, fight off impending doom. So the first order of business is get this penalty over with, then see what they can do as far as scoring. Puck is dumped in, power play is on Ryan. We had a whistle and an offside as the puck came in from center ice behind the line. And so uh, this one will be coming all the way back. And we'll have some line changes here. UIC in the middle of a line change. There you see Jamie Huskin going off to the bench. Last year he amassed 10 points behind three goals and seven assists. The UIC coached by Val Belmonte. Lake Superior State coached by Frank Anzalone. Both coaches in their fourth season behind the respective benches. And they've done great jobs too. Anzalone is going for victory number 62. He's a University of Buffalo grad and tried out. He played, uh, was drafted by the Rangers, New York Rangers, tried out. He coached the Waterloo Blackhawks before taking on this college opportunity and he's really made the most of it. Frank Anzalone in his fourth year at uh, the uh, school with the Lakers at Lake Superior State. In center ice. Houston brings it across, still carrying the puck. Tried to drop it back to his teammate, Dean Dixon. Well, it's good to see him up and skating all right. He took a terrible fall, as you know, in the second period. UIC deep in its own net. Penalty time in a minute even. They've killed off half of this penalty now of it being served by Sieber for high sticking and the puck frozen on the near side. And so the clock reads 14.25, the game clock, 55 seconds on the penalty. And this will be, uh, we'll have another line change. First player's coming in here now. And they'll face off outside the blue line with a 2 nothing hockey game in favor of uh, Lake Superior State. They have played very well tonight. Both goals coming off the stick of Nick Palumbo, number two scorer last year on this team at 45 points, his career high. And with the two tonight, he's up to 21. So it tells you what an accomplishment. He had a great year last year. Here's a breakout. Paul Cote with a uh, backhander. The rebound. And Ryan with a magnificent save on Vermette that time. Mark Vermette got the rebound, tried to jam it in, and Ryan was really up to the challenge. 
Brad Ryan has just been brilliant in goal all night long. Here you see the play. Mike Warris with the initial shot. He goes to the backhand. The rebound comes right out to Vermet. Vermet also is, uh, uh, has to go to the backhander as he was forced by the UIC defender. He tries to go top shelf, but Ryan juggled it and held down. As we return live, they have the draw to the left of Ryan. The battle is on for the puck, and they'll do it again. We have 36 seconds left on the penalty to Seaver. And uh, 1406 on the game clock. And again, they'll come outside the blue line for the faceoff here. Uh, we had one major penalty in a disqualification here tonight, and that went against Keith Martin. And his presence will definitely be missed. He's a good scorer. I mean, uh, he's right up there at 16 points on the year. He ranks among their leading scorers from the draw. Juarez once again. He had permit right in front of him. Juarez looking for a target. Skates around, thinks about it. He will shoot it. Hit traffic. It was blocked by the defense. Morris got it back. Feeds it over. That'll go out front. And Clark had it. Looking for a target. Not easy to come up with something here. Is that UIC defense? Look at Cronin get in there and dig that puck very hard. Reese bangs at it. Gets it off of the boards and out of play. Out of trouble momentarily. The penalty is over. The teams are at even strength, and UIC killed the penalty. Seaver on the ice. He'll skate over, and now a fresh player will come in for him, and offsides, icing will be called. This puck will be coming back as the penalty had expired for a 13-23 in the game clock, and now it's time to roll up your sleeves and go to work. Certainly is. Smart play by Scott Seaver. Came out of the penalty box, picked up the puck, and sent it the length of the ice, forcing the faceoff, giving UIC time to take a bit of a breather. As you get a look at the Lake Superior State bench, there you see Coach uh, Frank Angelon leaving your pitcher. There's a, also a picture coming into your screen of uh, referee Klinger. Klinger will, linesman. He will conduct the face off to the left of Brad Ryan. It was a must uh, kill situation for UIC there. Next goal could have pretty much uh, told the tale in this hockey game. We've had a stoppage of play down at the other end. Uh, the uh, goaltender Exelby is they're looking at his left skate it appears. And uh, having a little work done on that. I told you about him earlier and that he comes from an athletic family. That's very much the part of that ranked as the number four goaltender in the CCHA tonight. We have some other scores we can pass along to you. Final scores. Bowling Green has defeated Ferris State 5 to 1. Michigan falling to Miami of Ohio. How about that? Or no, excuse me, Michigan just barely beating Miami of Ohio 6 to 5. Western Michigan in the third leads Vermont 3 to 2. And of course this game here 2 to nothing Lake Superior leads over the Flames. All right. I have to wonder how he uh, suffered that equipment damage. It certainly isn't uh, through uh, overwork, that's for <laughs> no, sure. No, he's, uh, he's been able to put it on cruise control pretty much here tonight. Uh, his defense has done an outstanding job for him. They have played well. Here's Huskin with a puck. Feed to center ice, and Jeff Nelson could not hang on to the puck and really control it. The feed was a little bit too, too hot for him to handle. Puck will be dumped in. Score much from this end. Flames having trouble with Gerard. He's jammed hard into the boards. You can hear that one very clearly, I'm sure, and your homes. A bone crunching effort. Here's Ryan with a great save on a shot coming from the point. It was taken by Jeff Delane. Went to the near side, and it is brought out. Nelson trying to get to the puck. Came away. Simmer had it for a moment. Now a little backhand flick by Majic. Good skating effort. Backhanded feed, and UIC there to intercept that. Rink around the boards, and they jam it up. Simmer dug it out. Armstrong off of the boards on the far side. Two center ice where Majoric is waiting for it. Tries to feed it ahead, but UIC players are there. Here's Reese, brings it in, runs into Rona. One of the officials blocked his path to the near wing side. Trying to go in there and get it this time is Scott Johnson. Cleared out. Just out of the reach of Almquist that time. Flip to center ice. Johnson with it. He has a two on three. Johnson looking for a target. Fires a shot. Blocked by the defense. Ryan had to play the deflection there as that puck snuck through the defenseman. And uh, Ryan, very good reactions that time on what was not an easy puck to play. Scott Johnson trying to tee it up from the just inside the top of the right circle. There you see, he just gets a piece of it. It's like a knuckleball in baseball. 
as uh, Ryan tried to cover it up with the stick right on top of the player is Mike DeCarl in hopes of poking it home, but Ryan would have none of that. He covers it up. It's still a 2-0 Lake Superior State lead with 12 minutes exactly remaining here in the third period. White Wilhelm never threw a better one than that, did he? <laughs> of course, all those years for the White Sox. Uh, remember Hoyt, he was uh, probably the greatest, one of the greatest pitchers I ever saw. Jimmy Pierce always told me he was the toughest pitcher he ever faced was Hoyt Wilhelm with that knuckleball, and we saw hockey's equivalent of one just a moment ago. They'll face off to the right, one second off of the time remaining, to the right of Brad Ryan. Face off, and a good effort by Dean Dixon as he nearly was able to carry the putt from the face off. Boy, that was a uh, pretty fancy stick work. Pass to center right, Rosinski has a full head of steam. Here he comes in on goal! Mike Rosinski, goal number seven of the year, and point number 26, and that breaks the drought for the Flames. Mike Rosinski putting the Flames on the board. They had been shut out for five straight periods. Here he is one-on-one -on -one against Grant Clark. He simply outraces him, goes right around his man. He has one man back. That's Randy Axelby. He goes top shelf over the right shoulder, and it's a 2-1 Lake Superior State advantage. Mike Rosinski, what a player out of Wheeling, Illinois, his eighth of the season. Played at Wheeling High School and a very, very fine player. We had him as a guest in one of our recent telecasts. He was on that blue line last year. Remember Colin Chin and Ray Stazak? Boy, an outstanding, outstanding line. He is the only returning player. We'll pick up the announcement on the goal. Reese and Alexander on the assist. After the goal was scored. So we have a two to one hockey game now and UIC trying to put on more prep pressure. Whoa! The zone is cleared and uh, we'll see if, off, if icing is called. I think it hit somebody else's stick. And so icing is waved off. Reese got the assist, his 10th of the year. He's the number three assist man on the team along with Darren Alexander. And for him, that's his third assist of the year, third point of the year. Play is stopped here at 11.05 remaining in this hockey game. Well, it was a long time in coming, but UIC finally got on the board, and they looked to the guy who does it for him. Mike Rosinski went in and got the job done. He has definitely put up some very impressive numbers for UIC in three years. Overall, he has now played in 92 games. He has 54 goals, 76 assists for 130 points exactly. And once again, UIC will be penalized by uh, referee uh, Bob Henry. Well, and uh, there he had an advantage, some things that could happen potentially very good for this team. And then Clink is going right back into the box. We'll wait for the announcement on this. We have not have a, had it as of yet, so there apparently is some confusion as to what it's all about. Happened so quickly. Rob Plank going to the in two minutes. And we'll wait and pick it up. So once again, UIC at a disadvantage. Here's Girard. He has that big booming shot. Buck fed right through the slot. Oh, man, a dangerous play, but Houston could not get to it. Here's a hard shot coming from just inside the blue line. It whistles over the top of the goal mouth. That shot was taken by uh, Jim Rock that time. Look at them battle. Players just flying in there trying to get the puck loose. Rock tried to dig it out. Battles on for it. Behind the net, McIver was looking for it. McIver got it out. Here's Gerard. Look out. A hard shot right in front. And it got all the way through. Ryan pointed to his pads and said, I have it. Let's, let's blow the whistle right here. Ten and a half minutes left, and on the penalty, a minute 25 left. And I think he was just as surprised as the rest of us that he did have it. The shot taken from the point by Paul Gerard. Dixon was setting up the screen out front. Here you see the shot by Gerard. He tees it up from the point. That's Dixon in blue out in front. He's being hounded there by uh, Sean Cronin. The save is made between the pads by uh, Ryan, and there you see him motioning over to Bob Henry saying, hey, I have the puck. Let's whistle the play dead. <laughs> you won't see a better save than that, a screen save. How that puck snuck through, I don't know, and how Ryan saw it, I really don't know. Still in the zone. UIC having trouble getting it out. But Shorik is looking for an opportunity. Here's a hard whistler just going wide by Stensick as he really let one rip. Another drive right on goal, and Ryan made the save on that one on the second shot by Warris, I think, who let it go from just inside, or it was Cote make it, who let it go from just inside the blue lane, and the blue line, and that was a ripper. There you see a look at the Iron Man for UIC tonight. Ryan has definitely kept him in this hockey game. Puck comes out to the point. Here's Cote. He just one-times it. Mm. The save is made by Ryan, and he elects to cover up, and wisely so. From the draw as we return live, Lake Superior still has it. UIC cannot get it out, and I'll tell you what, if they don't do it sooner or later, they're going to pay the penalty for this. 
Here is uh, Johnson feeding it back. Cote thinks about it, fires, hits traffic, and bounces to the right of Ryan. Here's a golfing shot going up and away. A little bit of frustration there, perhaps, by Mike Mersh as he just tried to flip that puck out of trouble. And once again, UIC cannot clear the zone. Mike Mersh wisely giving his teammates a breather as uh, it was once again Lake Superior State taking it to UIC, hemming it in at the points and letting their point men let fly with the shots and let their forwards wreak havoc out front. 53 seconds left on the penalty being served by Clink. It's imperative that this be killed with no damage done. Obviously, that goes without saying with a two to one deficit facing the Flames right now and 958 remaining in this hockey game. The draw will come to the right of Ryan this time. Clink is in there against Dean Dixon. And Lake Superior gets the draw. It's fed Cote. He had to scramble to keep it in. Good block effort, but almost a high stick there by Knutzi. He's up in the air, kind of batting at that puck. And uh, kind of taking a swat at it, a little above belt level. And this one will be coming out of the zone as play was stopped. High stick whistled there by referee Bob Henry. That will force the play all the way back into Lake Superior State Country. That's about the first time in five minutes that UIC has <laughs> seen this end of the ice. It really seems like it, doesn't it? 45 seconds left on the penalty. Pachorek comes off the ice. Uh, Mike Mersch comes off. So we've had some personnel changes out there now. Still five on four in favor of Lake Superior State and a two to one lead in the hockey game. Trent Reese got the draw. Feeds it behind the net. Now a little forechecking opportunity if uh, they can do it. Seaver trying to dig it out. Reese working hard. Seaver gets the puck away and keeps it in the zone. Puts it on goal. Reese trying to follow up and forces Exelby to put it behind the net. This is the type of pressure that you like to see UIC put on. Reese had it for a moment. Nearly lost. Puck brought out. Fed across to the far wing side. and uh, Dean Dixon has to go over to get it. and Feeds it in. Ryan sets it up behind the net. Man, and they really jam after it. Cronin trying to get there. He's challenged by uh, Vermette. Goes over to the near wing side. Pressure is still on. Brought out of the zone. One second on the penalty. Penalty is over. Clank comes roaring out, and the teams are at even strength. There's Clank, the man who just served the penalty. Nine minutes left in the hockey game. And very much the Flames in need of a goal here. Here's a puck stolen. A hard drive, and it hit traffic. Hit a skate and bounced high over the goal, but still in play. Omquist let the shot go. They battle for it. Knutson trying to dig it out. Omquist got it. A shot. Great save. And what a shot by Omquist under pressure. Here is an attempt to shot. And Exelby falls on this one. And on that second shot, I think it was uh, Rosinski who let the second one go coming from the far side. And we have a stoppage of play. Boy, some good action near the goal here. Tommy Omquist showing great puck control, great patience. He comes out of the fray. He lets the defenseman commit himself. He takes the shot. Here you see Rosinski behind the net. He's looking for someone cutting through the slot. He elects to take the shot. Chest high. It's blocked by the goaltender, Exelby, and he falls on the puck, as well as a maze of players on top of him. Well, two goals scored tonight by uh, Palumbo. Certainly, Rosinski wouldn't mind saying, I'll tell you what, I'll go get two for my team. He certainly had that in mind when he took that last shot. Stoppage of play here. Can we have a new uh, faceoff man going in. Yes, we will. Puck still not dropped. Nelson is in there for UIC. And uh, they had uh, McIver go in there. Now he's going to go back out. And uh, Houston, I think, is stepping in there. No, it is uh, the guy with a big shot, Girard. From the draw goes behind the net. Net and Lake Superior is starting to feel a little pressure here. Nelson trying to dig it out. And they stop play. 8.29 remaining. We've had only one goal in the period, but it's on UIC's side of the ledger. In a 2-1 hockey game. Bill Hazen and Chris Matson sending you greetings here from the UIC Pavilion. It's a chilly Chicago, Illinois. Chilly greetings from the Midwest tonight. But uh, this is a great place to watch a game. It's a light crowd. We'll probably light us to the year because of the weather, but still, it's... Uh, Good place to go to watch a game. Mersh let go a shot, and X will be just turned that aside. Came from inside the blue line. Behind the net. Rock. Into the boards. Trying to dig it out was Mersh. It was sent high off of the glass on the far side. 25-5 shots on goal right now in favor of Lake Superior. A shot, and this one's turned aside as Nelson got off a ripper. Exelby was up to the challenge. That may be the best challenge they put on him tonight. 
Cronin, uh, uh, Huglin rather, with a good check, was able to get the puck away. And now UIC playing much more confidently. Armstrong with a drive, it's blocked at the defense. Machorek managed to block that shot. On the near side, Girard tries to feed it straight ahead on an advance to center ice. It comes loose. Simmer sends it in. Behind the net, Exelby sets it up. Going to the far side. Puck nearly stolen. It is stolen. UIC has it right back. Knutson tried to center. Hit the side of the net. Bounced away. And UIC has responded this third period. No question. They played much, much stronger hockey. But they need a goal here in order to try to get back in it and tie it. Hasek with the puck. Off of the glass. Held in. Nice job. And it is now clear to center ice. Here comes Houston straight up the gut. Now our um, the shot taken out of play by Scott Johnson. He brought it just inside the blue line and let one go. Hit a stick and bounced over the glass. UIC definitely uh, picking up on that goal by uh, Mike Rosinski and setting the tone here in the last three or four minutes. They've done an excellent job offensively. As you take a look at the UIC bench, there's Simmer now sitting down. The Flames trying to snap a two-game losing streak in the CCHA. Both losses coming at the hands of Bowling Green just a week ago, while uh, these same Lake Superior State Lakers have won four straight in CCHA play. Yeah, I believe it. They look very good. Reese and Dixon on the draw. UIC comes up with it. Flames trying to come back from behind. Here's Cronin. They did this against Michigan State in a recent game here. Came back from behind to win. Here's a pass. Omquist, boy, could not control it. It was just a little bit too hot for him. Three on three. And offside, that winger on the far side came, uh, was over as the pass was played to him. Then it was Palumbo coming in from the far side. And so this will be coming back. The pavilion, of course, one of the more spacious surfaces in all of college hockey. It's the largest college-owned arena in the United States. It seats about 8,802 for college play. And every seat is a perfect, picture-perfect seat. Delightful place to watch hockey. I've watched games in here from the upper deck and the lower deck. All delightful. Reese with a hard shot. Nice glove save by Exelby, and he holds on. That ball, uh, that puck was right uh, shoulder high, just under his shoulder, and uh, had a good, nice, clean view of it, and made the save. Trent Reese, the freshman from Calgary, Alberta, one of the big reasons why Val Balmani feels he's had an excellent recruiting year. One on one against uh, the Lake Superior State defender. In that case, it was Cote. Here you see the play just outside the zone. He comes inside, one times it. There you see it. Glove make that uh, face high. It's gloved by uh, goaltender Randy Axelby, forcing the face off to the right of the Lake Superior State goaltender. He caught that biscuit on the fly. And of course, that's one of his strengths, Axelby. He has an excellent gloved hand. So the chart goes on him, and, and we saw it right there, certainly. From the draw, here's Omquist. Shot hit traffic. Rebound in front, and Knutson tried to fire. Pass right in the slot. Knutson couldn't get to it. Off the stick of Rosinski. Would have been beautiful if it worked. Here's Dixon trying to feed it ahead. Stopped at the blue line. Back the other way, big Sean Cronin tries to feed it ahead, and we had uh, Omquist coming in way too soon on that. So this will be coming out. That's good defensive effort there as they kind of blocked the pass long enough, and Omquist could not hold himself back. And there you see Tommy Omquist as he takes a seat on the UIC bench. Time is uh, becoming a very important factor here, Chris, down to 6-19 remaining in this hockey game. Time and ice position become an import, important factor. Each face-off means so much to both clubs. Face-off is won by Lake Superior. Chaplin in his own end. Fed out, but Armstrong won it back. He dumps it in. Now they'll go after it. Now we have a whistle, a rather delayed call on this, and so a stoppage of play. Say, fans, for the best in Chicago sports, tune in to Sports Vision this week. The Boston Celtics take on the Bulls Tuesday starting at 7.30. On Thursday, the Bulls are back in action when they host Washington at 7.30 p.m. This and a whole lot more only on Sports Vision, Chicago's winners on cable. So be sure to join Jim Durham and Johnny Kerr for that. Coming up right here on Sports Vision. 6.08 remaining. From the draw, Lake Superior in their own end. Puck fed ahead, but stolen. Huglin tried to send it in. Knocked away. Clark carried it. We had a whistle outside of the blue line, offside. This will be coming out. Clark was kind of held up at the blue line, had a little trouble getting across, and that confused his winger, who went in on him. So we'll have a line change for UIC here now. As uh, the clock frozen at 5.58 remaining. From the draw. Puck stolen away. Great effort that time by Seaver. Look for a centering opportunity there, trying to get to that 
puck was Paul Torrey along the near boards, and whoa, a couple of players went down. Just lost their balance. I don't think anybody was throwing anything or any punches or anything. It's just the players lost their balance. That can happen from time to time. Plank looked for a little spill, as did uh, Chapla, uh, Chapdelaine. Well, with 5.48 remaining in a 2-1 hockey game, no one wants to take an ill-advised penalty at this point. Oh, yeah. Could prove very costly in the outcome. Indeed, ill-advised would be the key uh, buzzword on that. <laughs> Torrey will be trying to win the faceoff here and battles for it. But uh, notice here in the later stages of the game, the latter stages of the game, how much the faceoffs are all going to Lake Superior State. They've won the last three or four in succession. And that uh, is a very, very important factor. Now at center ice, Torrey with a hard shot on goal, and he tested Exelby from a long, long range. Kept in the zone, centering pass. It's over the top of uh, one of the UIC players, Plank, who is trying to go get it. Torrey looking behind the net. He has Plank in front, hit the side of the net on the centering pass. Well, they almost had a connection right there. Oh, and a hard check as uh, one of the UIC players, Trent Reese, really took a hard check. The clearing pass is called for icing. This one's coming back with 5.07 remaining. Let's make it Seaver was the guy. I want to give him proper credit because, man, he really got hammered. He got stapled into the boards that time. Seaver simply telling his opponent, if you're going to park in the corners, you're going to pay the meter, and that's exactly <laughs> what happened there. He lowered the boom, lowered his shoulder, and sent uh, Matt Cote flying. Well, we'll have a face-off coming up to the right of Exelby. Uh, remember, about the last three or four have all been won by Lake Superior State. Knutson is in there this time for the draw. Not sure who is in there for Lake Superior. This is uh, Sinsky. Stinsky is in there. Vic Stinsky, a freshman. In there against Knutson, a senior. And Mr. Jacobs, the linesman, will drop the puck. I want to make sure everything is in proper decorum here. They're not going to drop that puck until Everything is uh, proper. Here is uh, Omquist fanning on a shot after UIC finally got a draw on one, then they fan on the shot. Vachorek to center ice as the zone is cleared. Stinsick tried to keep it alive. Well, Omquist really came in from the back and hammered him. And down he went. Here's Omquist now. Looking, Stinsky couldn't wait to get a run back at him because he really had the boom lowered on him just a few.